This is a stupid good shot. It's back of a length ball just outside our stump. Travis Head doesn't do much to it. It's a push or a squidge. A decent nothing shot to a decent ball. This is not an attacking player smashing the ball everywhere. And yet, what happens next? Well, he times this ordinary shot so well that the ball races over the outfield and one of the world's fastest outfielders doesn't actually stop it. Yes, this is Ravi Jadeja. Not putting in his best work, of course, but still, he's on the boundary to stop this and he barely gets to what is a push. This innings is a combination of so many different things. Head timed many balls like this, where he just seemed to barely be trying to score and yet still hit a boundary from a ball that most people would either defend or push for one. Like take this one, it's slightly too straight, but the way in which he scores off it without taking any risk at all is remarkable. His pushes are boundaries. But when he wasn't doing this, he was also attacking very hard. In the air, over the keeper, launching with joy and power. The kind of innings late career Travis Head has become known for. The new gilly kind of dude. These type of shots change the direction of a match very quickly. And in between incredible timing and aggressive swings, he did this. He was hit on the head a couple of times. He fell on his ass. And then also he got this ball where he appears to have hit both of his nipples. The double nippler. And he almost ended up catching it as well. It was a remarkable innings in almost every way. And think about who was playing in this match. Just the batters, if you want. Shub Mangillu is amassing a fan club almost as quickly as he scores. Usman Khawaja, who's the comeback freak. David Warner, who's facing the ghost of Stuart Broad. Chiteshwa Pajara, one of the best batters for Sussex. Rohit Sharma is the current captain of the Mumbai Indians, if I'm not mistaken. Manus Labuschagne, who's basically clock cricket since being a concussion substitute. Steve Smith, who's going for the title of best since Bradman. And Virat Kohli, he goes okay as well. And we're sitting here, while well, I'm standing actually, talking about Travis Head. It really was that kind of day. In fact, for all the stars on the ground, the pack stands and the millions watching at home, the first session was kind of all about KS Barat. I mean, at least he was everywhere. I'm stretching this a little bit, but he was probably the least talked about player in the entire match. And suddenly he had a bizarrely big role. And I'm not talking about how Mohamed Shami was swinging the ball late and Barat was fumbling them. Although that happened as well. Nor am I talking about the fairly routine catch of Usman Khawaja, though that is also part of the job. It really was two things. The first was where Manus Labuschagne was standing. Perhaps I'm getting a bit obsessed with this, but it was clear that Manus is another one of these modern batters who is just going to stand in the middle of the wicket whenever he can. You can just see how much he was down the pitch. This was a clear plan as the ball was moving around and he was going to hang on to this position until the pitch evened out. And being that India wanted him LBW and in order to do that to trap him on the crease, that's harder to do when the batter is starting a meter outside the crease. So it meant that KS Barat had to come up to the stumps on a greenish wicket inside the first session when you've sent the opposition into bat. It's really not a thing we see that much in modern cricket. It shows you how much it has changed over the last couple of years. But that wasn't even the major talking point of KS Barra in that first session. That was the catch. But before we get there, it is worth looking at what Warner was doing. At this point, he was basically attacking on length. He said before the match he wanted to attack more, and he certainly followed that up. But he was basically looking for anything full or short and then throwing himself into it. Shardul had been bowling beautifully, swinging the ball away from the right-handers and then the odd wobble ball trying to get those LBWs. But he also delivered the occasional short ball. And that is what this is, coming from wide as hell. Barely legal, he's so far out there. And he goes short, and with that angle, it comes in. And if you're paying attention, you'll see that Barrett has barely moved at this point. And then he launches, and not only takes this catch, but in the end, he does it pretty easily. But let me show it to you this way. This is where the ball starts, and then this is where the ball is taken. And it's not just a dive, it's incredible footwork that got him there. This wicket was more important to India as well, because remember, they sent Australia in. And coming up to lunch, Australia were only one wicket down. Now you look at the numbers, and it suggests that Australia were struggling to control a quarter of their balls in that first session. I have the total number as 34, where Australia were hitting the ball where they did not want to. That should be about three wickets on average. So if Warner hadn't feathered this, India would have been a long way back in the game, despite having bowled pretty well. There was also a lot of talk about the wicket being green, but it was the swing and inconsistent bounce that was actually causing the most trouble early on. In fact, this looked like a pretty normal oval in June wicket, but considering some were bouncing weird and others were swinging and a few were seeming, it was pretty tough to bat on. But at the same time, for all the good bowling that India did, they essentially got two lucky wickets. Shardul's worst ball was one, but also Mohamed Shami got Manas on his first ball after lunch. 
And again, despite all the good bowling he'd done, this was essentially a half volley that may have just come back in a little bit. And Amanus played an incredibly loose shot and got himself bowled. But it did mean that Australia had pretty much lost three wickets in that first session, which considering India sent them in, seems fine. The problem is, that's when Head came out to bat. He made 27 runs from his first 16 balls. And at that point, remember, India were on top in this game. And so he changed things incredibly quickly. But what I found really interesting about his early batting is that he was incredible if the ball was just even slightly offline. And I think that's what Head does best right now. You can't give him any width at all. In fact, generally, he just makes his own anyway. But you can also see that even if he was slightly too straight, he was taking you down as well. And because he hits the ball so hard, either by power or timing, everything seems to go to the rope. Like this one here, it's just a little bit too straight. But because of the angle and the fact fine leg is in, you expect a single. But instead, he picks up another boundary. The balls move so quick that having fielders on the rope doesn't actually seem to stop him from scoring any of them. This was the following ball, and there was a fielder on the point boundary here as well. And it still doesn't matter. So Head just took the game away with a bunch of these boundaries. But he also gave plenty of chances. For instance, this was a three ball spell where almost everything he did was wrong. A crab-like movement that didn't really work, a short ball he struggles with almost entirely, and a weird waft off another short ball. And the thing is that this pattern continued right through his innings. Like there were times that Jadeja was all over him as well. India would put the pressure on, but usually what would happen is that Head would still find a boundary. And the problem with him is he never just finds one. There was usually a few in a row. So he was constantly putting the pressure back on India, either by timing the ball brilliantly or finding their micro errors or sometimes just willing to take a risk. They couldn't keep their thumb on him. And then that would often explode into him smashing the ball absolutely everywhere for small periods. Like these two shots are back to back. And of course, in this game, they also represent something else, India and the short ball, because they did actually start by attacking him on a length. And after he was in for a while, they usually tried to go a lot shorter. I mean, this looks like a Jackson Pollock painting, if he kind of stopped halfway through. And to be fair, the TV coverage was all over this. This is a particular pretty way of showing that they went to the short ball. But you could certainly tell after a while that India just sort of went all in. And considering how short they went, Head didn't actually score that many boundaries from it. But it was quite clear that he wasn't on top of this the way he was everything else. If you look at how often he was in control of each length, you can see that he had no problem with the full ball, which he played pretty well all day. Against length, he more than held his own. But even when you look at back of a length, you can see he's just not as in control of the ball. Unfortunately, once you have a look at the short balls, he's only in control 50% of the time. India weren't making a mistake, it just didn't work. And if you need visual proof of that, you won't get a better look at it than the over he actually went on to make his 100. Three shorter balls in one over. The first one he does well enough to not get killed by. The second one he clips to a ring fielder, and then he brings up his 100 off the edge. This was a man with 100 runs, but he never got anywhere near conquering the short ball today. He, in fact, even after he was 100, he still nearly dragged a Siraj ball back onto his stumps. And you can see why India got fixated on the short ball. We can look at the many near misses or almost concussions of his innings. They were all there. But the real problem is he can still launch a seamer over cover when he wants to and occasionally uppercut the short ball. And we'll know he'll take any error of length from a spinner or he just slashes one hard enough in the hope that he'll hit it through a fielder. Basically, Travis Head is following the baseball way, except he was doing this even pre baseball he will make mistakes, but while you are thinking about how to cash in on them, he's already slashed a bunch more boundaries. And by the time you look up at the scoreboard, your decent start to the day is gone. And let's be honest, today should have been a Steve Smith day. It's World Test Championship final day. He made the runs. He controlled the tempo. It was made for the biggest stars. But Steve Smith was Robin today. Travis Head was Batman. There were stupid shots, good shots, and many that were just stupidly good. Stupid.